Well, Jackson's reminding us of why nobody comes back from heaven. Once you get there, you won't want to come back. Turn with us today to the book of Matthew. We want to take a look this morning at uh, an extraordinary life. Um, And as best I could, uh, could try to prepare... I think I have everything that is said about this man in the Holy Scripture on, on, on one page. Matthew chapter number 1, we'll begin at verse number 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise... When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child, with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away, divorce her privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins." All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Bow with us. Lord, thank you for the truth we find in the Scriptures. What a precious privilege it is to be able to know what we know. Having the prophets of old, which was simply a foretelling of what was to come, you've turned the light on for us in the New Testament that we might know what happened and how it happened. And we thank you for this truth. We pray that we see what it is that made Joseph a just man. And may we become the same in Christ. We thank you for this as we ask it earnestly in Jesus' name. Amen. I read to you this morning uh, a comment, or at least a statement about the character of Joseph. And the Bible said there that he was a just man. Now, I want us to think this morning what it means to be a just man. Now, I've, I've struggled with this all week and certainly ask your prayers because I don't want to divert any of the attention that should be to Christ Toward Joseph, and and I think that's an important an important mission. When when I look into the scriptures about Joseph, there's very little given about him, and I believe that's on purpose, right? If we had needed any more information about Joseph, he would have given it. If it had been important for us to know anything else about the carpenter, he would have shown that to us. And the very fact that we only have small snippets of this man is an indication that we cannot put too much of the light upon him. Let me be clear. The light should not be upon any of us. It should always be upon him, Christ, and him alone. 
However, I do want to see what the Bible does say about Joseph, the husband of Mary. Uh, the Scripture teaches us that Mary and Joseph were espoused or betrothed, which means to the Jew, it means there had been a contract. There had been agreement that Mary would be Joseph's wife and that uh, under that contract she was bound as if she was married to him already. She was bound, obviously, by the law of God to be chaste, but certainly, having been betrothed to another man, she was to be faithful to Joseph alone. Now, she was under contract to be Joseph's wife. The Scripture said, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his ma mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. We know the story, and I'll read some more about that here in a minute. I, I do intend to read every piece of Scripture about Joseph, just so that you can grasp for our own application what made Joseph a just man. But the Bible said that the Holy Ghost, we read in the book of Luke, how the angel came to Mary and explained to her she had been chosen by God to be the mother of God's Son. Now, what was taking place was something that was in part, in order for Christ to become a man, he had to be born biologically as a man. He had to be born of a woman. And yet what he would not be born is a sinner. And so what was conceived in Mary's womb was not of a man, but was of God. Of the Holy Ghost specifically, very specifically, the Bible said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you will conceive of the Holy Spirit of God. And what shall be born of you will be the Son of God. He had to become a man. I don't want to chase rabbits here, but my mind many times this week went back to what Christ must have been like as a child. Um, he was limited to the, the things that men are limited to. I mean, at three months, he wasn't talking, right? Because children don't talk at three months old. He was limited to those things. And I thought to myself that whether he was one or, or over one years old when the wise men came, in the mind of a child, did he really know? I, I, I can't remember anything from one year old. Can you? What about two? Nobody? Did Christ even remember that there were magi bowed before him and presented his parents or him, with gold and frankincense and myrrh. And yet God chose a man to be his earthly father. An extraordinary man. A man to whom the scripture says was just. I wanted to explain to us this morning, or at least set for us a, the stage of what it means to be a just person. Isaiah 26, he said it this way, the way of the just is uprightness. I believe what we know about Joseph, the father of Jesus, the earthly father, the one that would raise him here and instruct him, at least in his early years, Joseph was a just man, an upright man. The Apostle Paul tells us about justness, about being just. It says this three times in the New Testament. It says that the just shall live by faith. So we know that if Joseph was a just man, then he was also a man of faith. We find Joseph in the same, in the same story as a man called Simeon. Simeon, the priest of God, the prophet of God, who had been, uh, had, had been the one told by Christ or told by God the Holy Spirit that Christ would, would be someone he seen, the salvation of the Lord before he died. And what the scripture tells us about Simeon was that he was a just man. A just man. 
What we also know about someone that is just is that their faith must be real in order to please God. Faith is where the distinction is born and sustained in someone that is just. Faith is that substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want to read now from the book of James, chapter number 2, as we begin, verse number 20. James wrote this, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? And he, and he writes this about Abraham. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was the faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. I want to see if we can tie that together as we look at this man, Joseph. I've read to you specifically what had happened. You know the story how that Mary was found with child. Now, when, when the angel had came to Mary and she conceived of the Holy Spirit, he also informed her that Elizabeth had also conceived in her old age. And it was now six months along with Elizabeth. And the scripture said that Mary went to visit Elizabeth. And the Bible said that when Mary just, just got there and Elizabeth saw her, the scripture said the babe within her own womb leaped for joy. And Elizabeth cried out in exultation and said, How is it that the mother of my Lord has come to... And this truth began to ring true in the ears of Mary. And they both worshipped God and rejoiced that day. Three months later, Mary goes home. Elizabeth has, has the child, John the Baptist, he would be... And, and, and Mary goes back home. Well it was found out fairly quickly that Mary was with child. And her and Joseph were not yet officially married, though contracted. And we hear in the scripture how that this must have uh, been a hard thing. And I, I'm imagining as a man the, the, the jealousy and the, the anger and the disappointment and the struggle that would have happened immediately as you began to find out this truth that, that the one that you're betrothed to was already with child. As a man, there's only one way we know this to take place. And so it would have been an extraordinary hard thing for Joseph to have to bring in and to, to work through. But you know what the Bible said about this man? It said, while he thought on these things, he could have acted rashly. He could have acted out of emotion and, a, and simply response, protecting his own reputation. He could have acted, and according to the law, had she been found guilty, she could have been stoned to death. But the Scripture teaches, and certainly every Jewish person knew, according to the book of Deuteronomy, that a, a woman that had played the harlot was to be stoned to death. Now, there was an exception. And you'll find it in the book of Deuteronomy that if a woman had been raped, then she was not to be put to death. Joseph had to think about this. The one thing he knew was that she was with child, and it wasn't him. That's all that he really knew. But the Bible said that he was a just man. A just man. It doesn't mean that he was a man of justice. I believe it meant he was a man of compassion, a man of rightness, a man that wanted to be right in the eyes of God, a man that desired to be right in the eyes of God. And here this man was faced with an incredible dilemma. He had to decide what he was going to do. And, and as he thought on these things, he had, he, had, he had made up his mind that he was not going to make a public example of her. Isn't that something 
My, how many of us would have. But not Joseph. The Bible said that he was not willing. Oh, I love the things that he was willing to do. I'm going to read to you those here this morning. And if you'll just bear with me, I want to look at the life of Joseph because I believe he was a man who loved God. I believe he was someone who found what it meant to know the Christ himself. He was a man who was willing to do the things of God. He was a man that was obedient to the voice of God, was he not? Oh, as he thought on these things, this, this terrible struggle that was in him, what he had made up his mind was that he couldn't marry her. The situation itself had put him in a position where he could not also bring himself into the situation that was Mary was in. He was not willing to make her a, private, a public example, but he was also not willing to marry her. So what he thought in his mind is that I will put her away. Now in the scripture, that means he was willing to give her a writing of divorcement. But he was only willing to do that privately. Right? He was not willing to make her a public example. Bear with me. We're going somewhere with this. He was a just man. According to God, he was a just man. I thought to myself most of the week, would he say the same thing of me? Joseph was a just man. And as he thought through those things, he had come to the conclusion nearly that he was going to give her a private writing of divorcement and they would just part ways and and he wasn't going to make a big deal out of it. He wasn't going to take her to the law. And she wasn't going to be stoned to death. And he wasn't going to publicly her, uh, embarrass her. But he was just going to give her a private divorce. But then something happened. Let me say to you this morning that when you begin to contemplate those things of God... When you begin to think through those things that trouble you the most, when you're perplexed by what to do, and even when you don't understand, when you begin to seek God, He will show you what to do. Amen. He will always show the just man what to do. To that man who seeks God above everything else, who desires to do that which you... You see, Joseph could have responded in any way, and yet what the Scripture said was that he was compassionate toward this woman. He didn't want to make a public... It wasn't out of jealousy or anger, although he certainly must have been disappointed, yet he could have done all of these things, and he did not. What he chose to do was to be calm, what he chose to do was to think about these things. What he chose to do was to yield himself unto God and to trust that God would show him what to do. And what we find is that God is faithful in every circumstance. As he laid down to sleep that night, his mind had settled on his plan or his course. And then the angel of the Lord, it says. Now, I don't... I don't put a whole lot of stock in vision or dreams myself. It's just not how he talks with me. But I can tell you he talked with Joseph like that many times. Why it was that way with Joseph, I don't know. When he came to Mary, Mary wasn't asleep, right? I mean, she was looking the angel in the eye and heard the, the declaration of what he would to say. But with Joseph, it seems that God chose to speak to him when he, when he slept, and the Bible said that as he slept that night that the angel of God gave him a very clear instruction. He said, Joseph, I like the part when he says his name. He called him by name. He said, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. That's all he got. That's it. God did not explain to him that she wasn't raped or any. No, what he did explain was is what is 
what she's carrying is my child. She conceived of the Holy Ghost, and I now expect you to take her as your wife just as if it had never been a concern. That's what he was telling him. He was saying to this man who God had said is a just man. He said, I want you to take her as your wife. And then I want you to understand that what, is, what she's carrying is conceived of the Holy Ghost and that she, she will bear a son and you are to call him Jesus It was the father's responsibility to name the child on the eighth day. You, Joseph, will name this child Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Message over. (laughs) And the Bible said he awoke and he did exactly what what the Holy Spirit told him to do. You say, oh, I'd like to be a just man. Well, Here's what I understand about this just man. He obeyed God. I've read to you several scriptures this morning about what it means to be just. The Bible said the just shall live by faith. I want to say to you today that Joseph, Joseph's obedience wasn't in something he did not believe. No, it's the contrary. Joseph did what he was told because he did believe. He got a simple word from God. It was very clear and it was very short. But the word that he got, he understood. And according to his faith in God, the Bible said he did what the Bible or what the Holy Ghost, the angel of God told him to do. He took Mary as his wife. No more questions asked. Luke chapter number 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. Now, what that meant was is Joseph had already made it clear, right? Possibly to the demise of his own reputation within the town. All right? No doubt a bit of a scandal, as many believed that, that Joseph had, and, and Mary had, had uh, jumped the gun with this. But regardless, the Bible said that Joseph, having received the mandate from Serenius the governor, or when, when, when all had to go back to be taxed, the Bible said that he took his wife. And they went back to his homeland. See, Joseph was a son of David. David was born in Bethlehem. Right? Remember Jesse or David, the son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. David was born in Bethlehem. Joseph was of Bethlehem because that was his lineage. And so when 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 the, the news of the taxing came, he had to take his family and had to go <clears throat> into Jerusalem, Bethlehem specifically, out of Galilee, out of Nazareth where he was. And the scripture says this about Joseph. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. I find here again that because of the faith of this just man, he obeyed God. When he got the word that he had to go back to his homeland, you know, I've, in my mind, a thousand times I've tried to understand what he thought. But he, can you imagine the distress it put him under? He said, Mary is with child, great with child, and now I've got to take her, what best I can calculate, about 75 miles into Bethlehem from Nazareth and her in this condition. And yet, what did Joseph do? He went. I see in this another thing that Joseph was willing to do. He was willing to take care of her. Could he have left her behind and just went into the city and paid his taxes and come back? He probably could have. But it would have violated everything that God had planned. Because Jesus was not to be born in Nazareth. 
He was to be born in Bethlehem. And Joseph took them to Bethlehem. Do you see the significance of the man that God chose to put into the life of this, this virgin that he would choose to carry, the Son of God? He chose this just man. And he was just because he believed God. And he believed God and obeyed God. Luke chapter 2, Joseph took Mary into Bethlehem, being great with child, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Skip down to verse number 21, same chapter, Luke number 2. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus. Who called him Jesus? Joseph did. It was Joseph's responsibility to name the Son of God. His name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him into Jerusalem. Now, they were still living in Bethlehem. And at eight days, the child, a male child, had to be taken and circumcised and offered up unto the Lord as a child of God. And so they brought him into Jerusalem. Who did? They did. Mary and Joseph. But whose responsibility was it? It was Joseph's. It was Joseph's to take his wife and to take the child and to walk them five, six miles into Jerusalem to find the temple, to go before the high priest. And guess what else he had to do? He had to offer sacrifices. Because a man-child had been born. He had to offer that what it said, the two turtle doves and a pigeon. And he had to take those and offer them as a sacrifice unto this child that was born that he knew to be the Son of God, Jesus, the divine. But I want you to note the obedience of Joseph. He obeyed the law of God. It ain't no wonder that God said of Joseph, he was a just man. He was a man that believed in God, believed in the word of God. And on the eighth day, he did just exactly what he was supposed to do. He presented him unto the Lord and he offered sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. I'm going to read it again. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus. Now, I've already alluded to this once. Jesus was a child, right? eight days old. He could not do anything for himself. Was he the son of God? Yes. Was he the divine incarnate lamb of the most high? Yes. But he could not eat on his own. Right? He could not drink. He could not think. He could not do anything. He was a baby. Who had to do it? Joseph, it was Joseph's responsibility to see that his wife and the child was taken unto God, that the offerings were given, that he was presented unto the Lord as a man who had opened the womb. He had to obey God. A just man. You ask yourself the question, what's the greatest thing that I can do for my children? I'd follow Joseph's example. Take them to God. Present them unto the Lord. Bring them to the house of God. Make it your own, men, a personal responsibility to be the father of a child in the best way we can, and that is to take them to God. Joseph did it. He did it. They took the child unto the, the temple and presented him unto the house. Now, they had no idea that Simeon was just waiting on somebody to bring in a baby. They didn't know that. 
Joseph didn't get any of that information from an angel. All he knew was that he was going to follow God according to the law. And when eight days came, he marched him right into Jerusalem and presented him unto the high priest. And we know the extraordinary story of how Simeon saw him and knew that he was the son of God. And he ran and grabbed the child and said, now I have seen the salvation of the Lord. Now I can depart in peace where mine eyes have seen him. He knew that he, and the Bible said that Mary and Joseph watched in wonder as they heard these things. And as Anna came in, the prophetess, and they heard also what she would say. They marveled in their heart what would be said. This just man, this just man. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. So I don't know. It, the Bible doesn't tell us, and so we probably shouldn't speculate. But for whatever reason, Mary and Joseph stayed in Bethlehem. Months. May have been more than a year that they stayed in Bethlehem. Where were they from? They were from Nazareth. But Joseph was of the house and the lineage of David, and so that's the reason he had to go back to Bethlehem. Well, the baby was born in Bethlehem, but did they stay in the manger? No, they left the manger, right? That was temporary shelter so she could have a baby. When they left, there they found somewhere else to go. What the scripture tells us in Matthew is it was a house. But they stayed in Bethlehem. And the Bible said one day that they got some visitors. Magi. We don't know how many. We 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 all assume it was three. We just know there were three gifts, but we don't know how many showed up. But there were some wise men that showed up, and they were looking for the king of the Jews. The Bible said when they found him, I read it to you this morning, they fell down and they worshipped him, and they presented unto him the gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. They worshipped the baby, the toddler. At that point, he's not an eight-day-old child anymore. At that point, they had traveled from Babylon, 800 miles, all the way to Judea, Jerusalem specifically, and then being directed by the scribes that the, the king of the Jews would be born in Bethlehem, they simply had a five-mile trek south into Bethlehem, and they followed the star, and the Bible said that the star stopped over where the young child was, and they rejoiced with exceeding great joy because they knew that God had led them to the king. And they worshipped him, and they gave him the gifts, those very expensive gifts. And they departed. Now, they were supposed to go back to Herod and tell him, hey, we found him. And tell him right where to go. But the Bible said they were warned in a dream also. And they departed another way back to their own country. But where I pick up now is what Joseph heard that night. Again, Joseph didn't know he was in danger. Speaking of Jesus, he didn't know the child was in danger. Had no idea. No idea. That Jesus was in danger of his life. And he went to sleep. Matthew chapter 2. When they departed, speaking of the wise men, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Who did the angel tell to do something? <laughs> I find this extraordinary. <laughs> the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about this man. But I'll get to talk to him one day. Because he believed God. He believed God. Truthfully, much probably couldn't be said about the carpenter, lest any of the light had been diverted from God the Father. This man had to go through life with no recognition. 
But I want you to know he was a man of God. He loved God. He believed God. You say, how do you know? Because he obeyed God. He obeyed God. Laid down that night having no idea that Herod was coming up with a plan and had already made up his mind that he was going to send his men into Bethlehem and they were to slaughter every child two years old and under. And did. And did. The Bible said that God spoke to Joseph in a dream that night. The angel spoke to him and said, listen, he said, take the young child and his mother, Mary, and he said, I want you to flee into Egypt and I want you to stay there until I bring you word. And the Bible said what? It said he arose and he left. When? The next day. <laughs> Does anybody feel? I love the faith of Joseph. The Lord said, Joseph, take the mother and the child and you run to Egypt and don't you leave there until I tell you. And when his eyes came open, he jumped up out of bed and he told Mary, get up. Where are we going? We've got to go to Egypt. What? That's 300 miles. And this is a toddler. He said, let's go and it has to be now. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. He was a just man. Oh, to God that I responded like he did. That at the very word of God, I responded and just obeyed God without question. Without question. Mary could have said, Joseph, how in the world are we going to make a 300-mile trip with a toddler? What will pay for it? He had gold, he had frankincense, and he had myrrh. He could have traveled around the world. God had already paid for the journey before the need had ever arose. Did Jesus have any need for gold, frankincense, and myrrh? No, those were simply gifts that worshipped him as the king. But I can guarantee you they paid in abundance, their trip and the entire stay. All right, we're getting close to the end. Because the Bible doesn't say no more about the man. Let me say what he does say. He said, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. <laughs> Matthew chapter number 2, verse number 19 but when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. What did Joseph do? <laughs> the Bible said, And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. That is exactly what God said to do, and it is exactly what Joseph did. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go to go thither, in, on, back into Bethlehem or Jerusalem. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream. Here's another dream. Where God told him specifically to turn aside into the parts of Galilee. And according to the scripture, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth. He did exactly what he was told to do. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. He, speaking of Jesus, shall be called a Nazarene. Jesus of Nazareth. How did Jesus ever get back to Nazareth? Joseph took him. Joseph obeyed God. At every point, Joseph obeyed God. The Bible said that he was a just man. Is that the end? No, there's one more place that we find reference specifically about the appearance of Jesus, and that's 12 years later. 
Luke chapter 2, same chapter. Luke chapter 2, verse 41 said, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Remember the story? Right? They leave with this big band of folks headed back to Nazareth and they realize Jesus is not with us. They get three days away before they realize that Jesus is not here. But here's what I want, to know, want you to remember about Joseph. It was every year he took his children. Right? By the time Jesus was 12 years old, he had brothers and sisters. Right? Because that's what the Bible said. The Bible said that Joseph didn't know Mary physically. He didn't know Mary until after the child had been born. After that marriage. At that point was it consummated, but only then. He had brothers and sisters by then. And yet every year Joseph took his children and his wife to Jerusalem and observed the Passover What made Joseph a just man? Well, it started with faith. If he didn't believe God, he wouldn't have obeyed God. But I'm talking about a man that believed God at his word. He didn't say, wait, but answer this for me. Let me throw a fleece out. No, Joseph was a man that at the voice of God simply did what God said to do. I'm going to challenge us as we close. I don't think I've ever tried to preach on Joseph. Not the easiest thing to do, actually. I found it a difficult thing. Because at every turn, I'm reminded that Joseph wasn't his father, but he had to be his father. You see what I'm saying? When that child was growing, there was a man in the house, and he was a godly man. When that little boy got up this big, he was following a man into the carpenter shop. And he was learning what his father did for a living. <laughs> I've grown to love this man through this week. And, and I'm not taking anything away from the, the Christ. Right? We'll get back to that here in just a minute. But I've learned to love his integrity and his commitment and his obedience and his faith to God. What an extraordinary man, Joseph was. Do you realize that when Jesus was grown, they did not say, he's the son of a harlot. What they said was, he's the son of a carpenter. <laughs> Why did they know that? Because that carpenter took care of him. Just like he was his own. I want to be a just man. I want to be a man that when God says it, I do it. Without question and in complete faith. The Bible said he was a just man. A just man. He obeyed God. He followed him. Do you? Right? Where's your life today? Right? If, if we do nothing else with this information this morning, may we compare ourselves with a simple carpenter who had a choice to make. Will I believe God and obey God, or will I go my own way? You know why God picked Joseph? Because he knew, because he knew that Joseph would obey him. Oh, what a beautiful story. Joseph, betrothed to this woman and hearing this news that is unbelievable. Unbelievable. How am I supposed to do? And then with a simple word from the angel. You say, but preacher, if God would just use an angel to speak to me, I'd know for sure. May I say to you today that we have divine revelation right here. It need not be a visit from an angel. As a matter of fact, I would consider what's written within the pages of this book beyond what any angel could ever say. I have it. It's right here. You see, God has already 
He's already given me the instruction. The question is whether or not I'll be as Joseph, a just man. Believe it and do it. The revelation is already here. The extraordinary power in this revelation is no less than God speaking to him through the night. God has spoke to us through his word. Will we also be obedient? Will we commit ourselves not just today, but for a life of obedience, a willingness? I need to go where? Egypt. All right. I need to go where? Nazareth. All right. The simple obedience of this man humbles me and convicts me because all God had to do was say, Joseph, I need you to do this. And he obeyed God. As we go into the new year, I want to challenge us that we have a choice to make. The divine Word of God has been all, it's already been given to us. Right? I'm not looking for a new revelation and don't need one. Right? I don't need an angel to speak to me in a dream because I can open up the pages of the Holy Script. It's all right here. The question really comes down to whether or not I'm willing to obey God. And the only way that I'll obey God is if I believe God. Because as it was said according, according to the Apostle James, my faith without the works is dead. It was imputed unto righteousness for Abraham, and he was called the friend of God. Why? Because he believed God. But not only did he believe God, but he obeyed God. In that faith, he did what he was told to do. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Come get a song. Boy, we got, a, we got a decision to make. If we're not just men and women, and remember, the Bible said that the just shall live by faith. If we're not just men and women, what are we waiting on? Right? What is it that keeps you from being a Joseph or a Mary? Right? Both of them have the same kind of story. They simply had to believe the message and do it. To do, they had to do it. What keeps you from being that same just person? We've got a choice to make. We've got a decision here. We've got to decide whether we're going to follow God or we're going to follow man, follow ourselves. I'll contend that the best thing we've ever done was to turn loose of self and follow God. Is he going to ask us to do some things that are hard? You think it was easy getting up in the middle of the night and saying, we got to leave right now and take out on a 300-mile journey on foot? Think that was easy? Oh, what I love about Joseph is that he didn't, he didn't even hesitate. He grabbed everything they could carry and out, in the night they went. We talk of the faith of Abraham and Job, Noah. I believe Joseph had great faith. And that's what I want. I want great faith. A faith that says whatever God says, do it. It's good. Whatever God says, just do it. That kind of faith. Where's your faith at this morning? Are you, are you even right with God now? Have you lived your own way? Have you gone your own path? Have you found yourself at the other end of the spectrum with, with just so little faith you don't even know really what to believe. If you need him this morning, this altar's open. I'm going to challenge you. 
Because if you're not a just man and a just woman, why not? What's in your way? What hinders you this morning from being what God called you to be? I can assure you He expects no less of you than He did Joseph or Mary. He expects you to believe Him and obey. What keeps you today from that? Turn loose of that this morning. Repent of that this morning. And get right with God. And let's go into this new year with a heart that says, whatever you say, that's what I'll do. I believe you. And I'm going to follow you. I'm going to trust you. As we stand and sing, if you need Him this morning, would you come? Maybe you need to give it to Christ. Mm-hmm.